Today I've got more updates for you since we are still on board the Discovery Princess. A big reminder, no matter what ship you are on, and I truly believe any cruise line, you have got to watch your onboard account. And I'll let you know experience with that here on board. Also, uh, the ice cream desserts that are advertised, they came out when they were added as an addition to the Plus package and the Premier package, but you can also buy them separate. I've got news for you about that. We're going to talk about the culinary demonstration. I'm going to show you part of the galley tour. Uh, Steve Wozniak is the celebrity who is on board and he gave um, two enrichment seminars today or uh, not seminars really, but visited. So I'm going to tell you about that. So let's go ahead and get started. Hi there, this is Allison with Let's Go Travel Tips. Today is Friday, it is April 12th of 2024. And let's start at the very top. I'm going to give you the um, bad news first, the things that I think that you need to remember, and then we're gonna go ahead and um, move on to more news. Let's start at the very top with your onboard account. If you are new to cruising, as you board the ship, you have a credit card, a debit card, whatever it is that you choose, or cash, that you apply to your account on board. Anything that you purchase on board is, uh, goes against that credit card. They will put a hold um, immediately on your card to allow um, to hold some of your credit for anything that you might purchase on board. So don't be surprised if you see that. Don't be alarmed. Uh, but anyway, so as you're on board, everything that you buy while you're on board the ship, whether it's a drink, if you don't have a package, whether it's an excursion, if you buy something at the shops, no matter if you go in the casino and do anything there, you can um, use the casino either with cash or with your card, uh, putting that out there. But otherwise, everything just shows up on your shipboard account and you can review that anytime that you want to, just to see where things stand and I highly recommend that. And I very, very, very highly recommend it. Don't wait until the last day of the cruise. So let me highlight a couple of things. First of all, on our account, there were a couple of errors. And first of all, um, Gordon and I both put in the same credit card number into the app uh, to uh, prepare to board the ship. However, every time we get on board a ship, we have to put our accounts together and the reason for that is, um, even though they're going to charge to the same account, if one of us ends up with a credit and the other one ends up um, owing something, then we don't um, get a refund on one and then um, be charged for the other one. The really interesting thing to me, though, is uh, we um, brought on board some gift cards that were gifts to us and applied them to the account. Gordon is the one that took them down. They were my gift cards to me, but he's the one that took them down, and so they put them against his charge so he ended up with a negative charge and then mine um, was going to be you know oh many here's the thing you need to know about gift cards though if you apply gift cards to your account on board and you don't use it all up they're going to put that money back on the gift card again they're not going to mail you a check for it um, it is going to be returned to those gift cards so we didn't want that money returned to the gift cards we wanted it applied against my charges so make sure that they combine your accounts if you're traveling with someone that you want your account to be combined all right if you don't want your account combined then don't but if you're traveling together and you expect for your charges to be settled together you're going to have to go talk to them about it another thing that we noticed is when you get on board the ship with Princess, if you are elite, you get a 10% discount on the excursions. They don't process that as you book your excursions. When you buy your excursions ahead of time, you pay for them with your credit card at full price, and then once you get on board, they will credit you for that 10%, that extra money for each excursion. Well, this is Gordon's first cruise as being elite, and so my credit was showing up, but his wasn't. So he had to go ask for that. The, another thing that happened with ours is there were random bar charges. When we um, boarded the ship, we um, went ahead and upgraded uh, to the soda package. So that package covers your mocktails, your soda, your smoothies, and your fruit juices. Not the fruit juices at the juice bar. That's a different thing, okay? Uh, but anyway, so that's what's covered, and we upgraded to that. So there shouldn't have been any bar charges on the card, and so we um, had to have those removed as well. So make sure that you keep an eye. This On this cruise, I am seeing something new for someone in our group. I'm having a really hard time getting it taken off. We're going back to guest services again this evening. They got a charge on their shipboard account, $100 
for upgrading the plus package. Now with this Eclipse Cruise, it came out long enough ago and people booked long enough ago that it was before we had that change to the plus package. The plus package was $50 and then it was changed to $60. Not only did the price increase, but what was included in the package increased. But people who had booked at that $50 rate had the option if they wanted to pay the extra $10. And I'm gonna say, Princess should have grandfathered them in. That was a very poor move. But anyway, um, it's caused a lot of confusion among people with that not happening. So anyway, they were back with the $50 plan and didn't need the extra charge. Well, um, here we are two days before the cruise ends. Yesterday, it shows up on their shipboard account, $100 for upgrading, because we've got, it's $10 a day, we've got a 10 day cruise here, so they each got $100. And so I'm trying to get this taken off because neither one of them um, okayed upgrading to that plus package. So really watch closely for that. And hopefully we're getting close to the end of cruises that were booked at the $50 plus package rate. So hopefully that problem's gonna go away, but I want you to know about it so that you can keep your eye out for charges like that on your account if you didn't okay it. If you did okay it, then that's great, no problem. Don't worry about it, um, just let it go. So no matter what you're looking at, make sure that you know what the charges on your account are for, and you might have to kind of think hard because this leads to my next discussion, uh, those ice cream desserts. So back, um, it was December 14th of 2022 when Princess um, made the change that the package was gonna cost $60, the premiere was going to be $80, and it was going to um, ha include more things in it. Well that's when these ice cream desserts came to be. And so you get two of them a day if you book that plus package and you can have as many as you want a day if you book the premier package or you can pay for them separately. Well, when we were on the Sun Princess, I had one and the first one I'm going to admit was absolutely delicious. So the day before we got off the ship, I decided we should have another one of those. So we went down and I ordered the same one again and it didn't have the same stuff in it. It was not the same. So I ended up not eating a lot of it. Um, I'm an ice cream, I'm kind of an ice cream person. If it's really, really good and I like it, then I like it. But otherwise, I don't really need ice cream. So I didn't even finish that. Well, I thought here, even though we'd have to pay the, um, they range like from $10.95, I believe to $12.95. I've got a picture of that menu here on board the ship for you. Um, even though we had to pay for it, I thought, you know what, let's go see if it's really good. So we went down and got it. The same one again, the Godfather is the one I like. And um, this time it came entirely different. It had like stale popcorn on the top of it. It was nothing uh, like what I received either time on the Sun Princess and nothing like was in the description. So why am I telling you this? <laughs> just so you can know. <laughs> I just want you to know what's going on so that you're not disappointed as well. Um, I'm just putting that out there. Am I going to need to get one of those again? No, I'm done with those. And so just, and you know, I probably should have, I get it. I should have gone back to the ice cream place and um, told them that it was not what I expected. It didn't have it what I wanted. And you know, I am really having a hard time navigating. I'll be honest with you. I'm having a really hard time navigating what the crew members don't know, what they're not aware of. I think that those crew members were making the dessert like they had been told to make them. And so if I go back and I complain to them, um, it's not their fault. Uh, so yeah, put in the comments, like how we should be doing this. I don't know. And in the long run, I think they probably just put on those desserts what they've got, right? Um, my ice cream in it wasn't gelato. They're advertised as having gelato in them. And so I don't know. It's a, it's a hard thing, but I just wanted to let you know that maybe they're not worth paying for. If you've, if you've already got the package because you want it for something else, yeah, go get them. But I don't know that they're really worth paying for, but everybody gets to decide what they do with their money. So I just wanted to bring you up to date on that. Um, now we're going to talk about the culinary show. If you're new to Princess or you have been on a Princess cruise before and you haven't noticed, on the very last day of the cruise, they always have um, like a culinary demonstration show and it's really fun. They have usually the head chef on the ship there and usually it'll be the director of like the hotel and a uh, beverage manager, he'll be there or she'll be there and they'll make desserts and they'll do them a little bit differently because one is a chef and the other one's not and they just really intend to make it a lot of fun. It's really fun. They should talk about some of the behind the scenes things before they do that. And then at the end of it, they have some of the crew members who 
work in the um, kitchen and in the galley, everything come down. And so I videoed some of that here for you. So watch that and then I'll talk to you. Uh, everyone, once again, thank you so, so much for being here. On our behalf, once again, myself and the chef, I think we'd like to thank everyone for being a part of this amazing experience. So after that portion, the um, they took us, anyone who wanted to go could go on their galley tour. So we got to walk through the galley, see some of the crew members making the actual lunch. They had, um, we got to see the pictures up. I'm gonna let you see this footage here, but pay attention because they show the different areas where food is made. Like we didn't get to tour the whole thing, but we got to go through part. They had some of their amazing crew members there that we got to see and notice that they have photos on the wall of what every dish is supposed to look like. We got to see that on the tour we got to do on the Sun Princess and it was Rudy Sodeman who came up with that idea and the idea is that everyone is supposed to look at the picture of how that dish is supposed to look before they take it out and serve it to the guests so I thought that was nice so um, take a look here at the galley on the beautiful Discovery Princess. All right, here on your right side, you see this is a bar which belongs to the Skyway, Danilo. So from here, we pick up all the drinks during the opening hours at the lunch and dinner time. On the right side here, you see also some pictures with all the dishes that we serve during the dinner time. So this everyone will be aware about the presentation of the food, which is very important, actually, yeah? And that's in all the restaurants, or? Yes, all three Danilo's has the same menu. I think that these are such fun things to attend. You might want to do that. And it's really nice that we're far enough away from COVID now that they have started doing those tours again. Um, it took quite a while before they started doing that. And I think that's a really nice touch. And I really appreciate Princess doing that. Another thing that really stood out to me as um, they were talking at the end of that demonstration, before we started the galley tour, they talked about how very important our um, our um, end of cruise surveys are how important the forms that you fill out are to tell um, the management on board how everything went and so i never ever submit saying that something was good that wasn't um, i do feel like it is really important to be um, take the time to fill those out and the um, the hotel um, and uh, beverage manager here food and beverage um, I should look at his official title there. But anyway, he was saying how if you say that something, you know, you give it a 10 out of a 10, it doesn't mean that everything is absolutely perfect, but it means that, um, that you had a lovely experience and that they are there doing all they can to make anything better. And I really appreciated that. I can really tell on this cruise that they have kicked their game up a notch since we were on our last Princess Cruise. And I have also noticed that they are very anxious to please. They want everyone to be really happy. Happy. 
with their food. They are really trying to do a good job with the service that you receive on board. So I think it's important that we take the time, as I mentioned in my video yesterday, to fill out those forms, fill out the survey. Don't forget to talk about crew members who um, they did a good job for you, that you saw doing their job well. I think that's very important. So during the course of this cruise, I have had a few people comment, and I can't remember if it's on a video or on Facebook, asking if I knew who the celebrity was on board, and I didn't. And then the other day, I got to talk with Eric, with Exploring with Eric, and he knew who it was, Steve Wozniak, uh, the co-founder of Apple. And so I realized, so he pulled up the picture and showed me, and I had seen him on board. And so it's been um, fun to know that he's been here this week, but the cool thing is that today on our last sea day, he did two presentations, one at one o'clock and one at 3.30, so that everyone on the ship that wants to listen could have the um, opportunity to come to the Princess Theater and just listen to him talk about things. He kind of just um, gave um, his um, growing up years and how he got interested in doing computer things and just that whole experience kind of in a nutshell, the history there of Apple and a lot of the history of computers and um, what he had to do with it. He did a really good job and it was really interesting. I videoed the very front of it here for you so that you can watch that. So I'll be right back, watch that. Princess Cruises proudly presents Steve Wozniak. <laughs> I think it is. The great and powerful Woz, one of the co-founders of Apple Computer. He and Steve Jobs yeah, turned Yeah, I know who he is. I watched Dancing with the Stars. <laughs> Steve Wozniak, best known as the co-founder of Apple Computer along with Steve Jobs. But it was the Woz alone who built the first personal computer, the Apple One, and later, the Apple II, a device that launched the personal computer revolution. I said, hey Woz, um, come over and meet Steve. So Steve, meet Steve. And this is where it happened. Apple wouldn't exist if it wasn't for Steve Wozniak. You know, I mean, that's just plain and simple. There were a lot of things that Jobs um, were responsible for, but Steve was the guy that built computers in his head. We liberated some parts from Hewlett Packard and Atari. <laughs> and uh, worked on a design for about six months and decided that we would uh, build our own computer. And Jobs said to me, I knew that with Wozniak's brilliant designs and my marketing skills, we could sell anything. It was like, we'll both do it for fun, and even though we're going to lose some money probably, we'll just have been able to say we had a company. I think what makes Steve Wozniak so special is he's just a really sweet guy that loves technology more than anyone I've ever seen in my entire life. As far as Wozniak was concerned, the world was a great big sandbox with a lot of toys to play with. He went on to become devoted to passing on his passions in mathematics and electronics. Setting up classes for kids, giving them computers, giving them high quality instruction and teaching them that. Yeah, there was something they could do if they had the right resources, if somebody believed in them particularly. Steve Wozniak is the original do-it-yourself guy the guy who figures out how to do something. Here's a problem, what do I want to do? What would be some fun way to use technology to solve a puzzle? And then opens it up to everybody and changes the world. The co-founder of Apple, Steve Wozniak, and his wife, Janet Wozniak. What a time we're having, best cruise ever for us. I'm, I do a lot of unusual things in life, and a lot of my designs were very much out of the book, things that weren't even written in the, the science of computers, and I'm very proud of those, but I, I have hundreds of, of unusual things. I'm going to start a podcast about them pretty soon. But I... Okay, we're going to go ahead and start the Q&A, and, &A. and I, the first question I'm going to ask you, <clears throat> what was your childhood like growing up? Yeah, I was lucky to be so good in math and sciences, and I was... The Alrighty, so that was the opening, and then um, they just had like a question and answer thing. His wife was there with him, and she asked. Um, she was in charge of the questions, and then he would talk about things. And I just thought it was really cool that um, he had the chance to be on board. This is his first Princess Cruise. He also appeared on The Wake Show um, this morning, which, by the way, if you don't know what, you can watch The Wake Show the night before. And so last night we watched 
him on the wake show and just um, he said he'd been on cruises on smaller ships before which I can imagine having the resources to do that been on a lot of those kind of cruises and this was his first one on Princess commented how big the ship is but said he had had a really nice time and so I just wanted to share that with you we had it was really interesting and it's fun to hear something from someone firsthand who lived something that you've seen a lot written about you've seen show you know movies made about it's really nice to hear firsthand from things and um, a really nice overview so uh, let me know um, if you would like to go to something like that this, if you haven't subscribed to our channel yet will you please hit that subscribe button we need to have you with us um, like I've said before together we have so much more influence than we do just separately and we also have a lot more fun together also if you appreciate my updates please give this video a thumbs up because that really helps us out as well so thank you very much this leads me to a quick discussion here. I wanted to remind everyone, and this is a good reminder to me too, when you are on board a cruise ship, really take the time to read through the schedule of events because we can get really busy with being on a cruise by the time um, you do everything that you um, like to do in your day and you seek out the things that you know you love, like people that love trivia or people that um, thoroughly enjoy going to the dance classes or people that just specifically enjoy the, the enrichment. Really take a look at um, the schedule of events, the pattern, whatever it's called on the ship that you're on or on another cruise line they call all them other things really read through it so that you don't miss anything that is important today at one o'clock Gordon could go to the thing um, that um, Steve Wozniak did and I was waiting to get my laptop out of the cabin while the um, room steward was busy in the cabin so I didn't go because I needed to do something and so I popped in um, for a while at 3 30 with one of our let's go family members that is in our group and so just really take the time to see everything out there and maybe go see um, some things that you don't know um, um, I love um, computers, I use computers, and I love my phone, <laughs> but I didn't really know as much as I probably should have known about the history of everything to do with that. So it was really um, a good enrichment experience for me too. So put in the comments, what are some of your favorite onboard activities? I would really like to hear about that. Let me know why you like them. So I would say that my um, favorite ones of all probably are definitely enrichment. I thoroughly enjoy those, but it's always fun to go to a line dance class. It's always fun to um, go hear trivia. I don't usually participate in trivia, but I love to go listen to people. It's fun to hear the funny answers some of them give. It's amazing um, how much trivia some people know. It's just um, really cool. So thanks for being here with me today. I will see you here again tomorrow, and I'll be talking to you all again really soon. You all take really good care. God bless you. Love you. Bye-bye.